Apparently, we can take our very own functional tank, remove all the functional stuff from it, make it big and pyramid-y, then mount a nice gun on there, and crank those numbers all the way up, but then also make it <laughs> incredibly short, to the point where it's even inside the tank. Then we just gotta make a few more little adjustments. I need the tank to be as light as possible. I love how you just start turning the dials on this game and really stupid stuff happens that shouldn't happen. Like you can just crank this thing up to a million and it will let you do that for some reason. And we have a 24 speed transmission in there. That we're probably going to need just to make this thing move. The crew's really dangerously gonna get in from the back. The driver's gonna have to lay on his stomach to see where we're going. The gunner I do naturally care about a little bit so he gets to see. Then we just need a little more room up top because this thing I don't think is big enough. Okay, there we go. We just had to make the turret a little bigger and it actually looks a lot like a pyramid. Uh, I'm also gonna try and shorten this up just a little bit. Basically, I'm trying to make a tank that does backflips so far. Not sure how to adjust this thing, but I'm not sure that's going to be a huge matter. Anyways, I do believe this is actually a functional tank at this point, so let's... Oh, we're missing a commander's cupola, which is a thing that looks like R2-D2 or a sewer pipe or something, so we'll throw that up top. Yeah, it's not super balanced yet, but it's actually pretty quick for such a little tank. It's really quick. It handles like garbage, but does it do a backflip? That's what's really important, because we have an enormous gun on here. No, but it does kick it up pretty hard. So we just need to do a little bit of balancing. So maybe something like that will have it not tipping over backwards at a moment's notice. And yeah, that seems to be a little bit better. It handles so good. Can it cross a trench though? And <laughs> yep, it just scoots right across. Ooh, I've never tested a tank's jumping capability before. It can jump. This is the best tank I've ever made so far. But I was told there could be backflips, so we need to get that started at some point, because if we fire the gun, oh, it definitely kicks back pretty hard, but we have a wheelie bar I don't know how to get rid of. It handles so quickly, though. I like these small tanks. This is a fun idea. But let's put it up to the test against a Centurion tank. I feel like I'm going to be so quick he won't be able to hit me. Yeah, he missed. Okay, he did hit me there, but we have a colossal cannon. Well, we <laughs> hit the field way out there. Now it's going to take me 160 seconds to reload. I sometimes forget you actually have to manually uh, aim these things and that can take a second. Okay, he missed us there. As soon as we get the turret actually uh, on sight, we will blast him. And yep, we killed him dead because we have a massive cannon. Even though we don't have a barrel, our accuracy probably isn't super great. But that definitely makes me think we could probably still do this a little bit smaller. Okay, this one's definitely going to have a colossally big cannon that's also going to be... Well, we're, uh, we're going to pull it back to there. Okay, let's try this version of the tank to see what this is like. It's narrower for sure, it's a lot lighter, it does still wheelie. Uh, it's probably a little bit longer again, but I really can't figure out a way to make that short. But it definitely still has a way big cannon on it. It's also very narrow, so it does not turn in a hurry. But it's so quick that that's okay. We can circle the block before facing our enemies. And how's its jumping capabilities? Pretty good. As far as climbing capabilities, yeah, it jumps right off the top. Because we're not doing backflips yet, I decided to add a few more cannons. But as I understand, you need to add the gunner to the extra cannons. So he's going for uh, cannon 2 and 3. So he's going to be a busy little guy in there, but that does look like he'll be firing multiple cannons at once. Okay, this time we're going to watch closely if all three of those barrels go off. It's hard to tell, but I really think they are. So let's test our masterpiece against uh, whatever that thing is. Uh, hopefully he doesn't kill us first. He's going to shoot and miss. I can feel it. Or maybe he won't. We're very narrow though. He won't hit us. We're going to go ahead and fire our cannons on him. We went right over his head. Well, at least we're a very fast tank, so we can just straight up ram him, I think. And got him. <laughs> we can actually push him out of the way. It works. Wow. We actually killed him with that. I guess I shouldn't be surprised that I missed with my shot. The barrel is very short, so those uh, bullets are probably going to go pretty much wherever they want. So let's pick a bigger target. I think that's a bigger target. Yeah, that's a very big tank. So we're going to turn ourselves into him or even just fire straight at him. Got him. <laughs> okay, I'm pretty sure we fired all three shots there. I need to watch the replay, but I felt like I thought, saw the three shells go through it. So we'd probably better see how many more cannons we can add for the time being and if they all fire. So it looks like the one crewman is going to be firing all five cannons at once. At least he says he is. I think I narrowed up my tank a little bit too, just, you know, to make it harder to hit. So let's just uh, fire at these trees for a second and see what happens. Yeah, I feel like we're getting a little more firepower now. Okay, the only way to really know if our uh, tanks are going to be functional is to try them in battle. So we've got like 12 of these uh, ridiculous things versus 12 fully functional normal tanks. 
you can already see the difference though. Look how fast these are. They're moving up the battlefield. And we've already destroyed one of them. Uh, just be careful not to hit any trees, anyone. I didn't put any armor on these. They're literally just a pile of cannons. The strategy with these is just get the enemy and hit them first. Anything else is complete failure for this tank. Oh, we already lost that one. Yeah, I kind of forgot the long reload time on these. Uh, I'll hopefully fix that up later, but this is kind of like a one-shot salvo type deal. It's basically a hell, Hail Mary of tanks. You got one chance to do this. If you miss, then you're dying a horrible death. Okay, I just found one that uh, doesn't need to reload. The problem is it's user error. The other drivers just don't know what they're doing like that. i just pretty sure I just destroyed that tank, maybe two of them. Ooh, here comes another guy. Oh, he got destroyed right before I hit him. We're starting to even out the numbers though. That thing went flying. I think the other drawback of this tank is obviously it's not accurate at range because its barrel is uh like four centimeters long. But that is why I made it so quick. That way you can run right up. It's basically a shotgun in tank form. So you got to get real close. Run right up. Shoot them. You won't miss if you're close. But we are losing this battle 9 to 2. But I've got an idea. We can revise this. So we're basically going to take everything we know about tanks and start fresh to build the ultimate weapon of destruction. Starting with the tracks, they need to be wide, we're gonna need stability. This is gonna be a short, fat tank. It's hamburger style, it's gonna be wide. And then it's probably gonna have to have some kind of room inside of it, we'll maybe adjust that later, but you can see what I'm envisioning already. I am a little bit sad, I think you can only put one turret on these at a time, but you know what, this is gonna work out. Because what's that old saying? If you don't know knots, tie lots. Same principle applies, but we're gonna be firing guns instead of tying knots. I guess I should actually make these thinner. I did them thick before because it looks funny, but that's going to make it heavier. And one benefit to having tanks uh, this big is that we can fit the ammo we need inside quite easily. Okay, let's just give this a little test before we get too carried away to make sure it works. And so far, it's actually a lot better than I thought it was. It's probably pretty light. It will get high centered a lot, but as long as you don't straddle anything between us, we'll be okay. Okay, I just want to test to make sure it is stable and working before we start uh, really piling things on. I feel like it only fired one bullet there again. It's really hard to tell. Everything's set so that both cannons should fire at the same time. But a good way to tell for sure to, would be to add more cannons way out there on the sides. We should be able to see if those are firing. Okay, don't ask me how this works because I have no idea what I'm doing. But <laughs> watch and learn. I finally got more of the cannons to fire. Just, just bear with me and enjoy this for a second. We made a tank already that does this. <laughs> and it's only going to get worse from here. Oh, it's going to be a good day. Now, lots of cannons means we need lots of bullets inside that are highly explosive and wildly dangerous. I think I'm finally starting to understand. Uh, the tank's also getting a little bit heavy, probably because it's full of obnoxiously large shells. But for every cannon that you want to fire, you need to give it a loader, naturally, because you need someone to load bullets into it. Once they're in there, though, <laughs> you have quite a tank on your hands. And then you can see them each, I think, being individually reloaded. That's what the little bullet things are that are slowly filling back up. Some of them are a little bit quicker than others just because of the layout of the internals of the tank because I put zero thought and effort into that. But that doesn't really seem like something that's that important considering I can just go like that and whatever's in front of me is long since dead. But that is actually obviously a pretty major design flaw because uh, I can't like I've got to point the tank in the direction it's going because I didn't put my guns on the turret which maybe I should do. But that kind of actually makes sense because then we could fit more guns and we could have less tanks so we'd be lighter, quicker, and bouncier. So I think this is going to be a pretty good size for a tank. It's still bigger than it looks but I'm trying to conserve weight. We need lots of bullets and cannons. And it turns out if you use the different kind of cannon mounts you can actually fit a lot more in a tiny little area. Plus just think of all the weight we're going to be saving by doing all these short little cannons. Anyways, this is what we've constructed now. It can actually aim, it's actually pretty quick, and it's able to fire a lot of cannons all at once, and it's maneuverable. Pretty sure this is going to be another one of those uh, one and done type tanks, but it's got the firepower to uh, stop things. Our gunner's view is slightly obstructed, and it looks like we only have a few of our guns loaded right now. Not really sure why. We'll fix that in a second. For now, I just really want to try and shoot something. Okay, he hit us once. Where is he? Then I think... Uh, yeah, I think he's pretty dead. I think we sent him flying. But I think we might have only fired five of our cannons there. Not really sure why. It's a little bit confusing how this all works. But we probably just hit him with five <laughs> giant shells. What do you think happens if we fire sideways? We almost tip over. Okay, so let's see if we can put these little guys to the test. It's going to be a 12v12 battle. Uh, we have like eight uh, sh shot salvos. 
they all seem pretty contented to sit there. Uh, we're going to go find the enemy because I'm pretty sure we can just straight up outfire them. They already got one of ours. Plus, these things have no armor. They have to have no armor to be able to move because all their weight is in their cannons and ammo. Okay, so he did hit me. We're going to fire there. Not sure if we hit anyone. The bullet drop is a little hard to compensate for when you don't know <laughs> where you're firing. But that's kind of just why I wanted to have all these uh, shells. So you could just go like that and hopefully hit something. <laughs> but everything just goes flying. These things are basically just kamikaze machines. <laughs> okay, I, I just realized I think our tanks do just self-destruct. As soon as we fire them, they just <laughs> tear themselves apart. So, not my best tank I've ever designed, but still not my worst. But... It's hard to aim this one, so we need a little bit of a revision. Okay, so after much screwing around, I think I've got this down to a science. This is now the base we're building on. I've uh, made the tracks nice and thin and short to make sure the tank stays as light as possible. Mostly so that we can fit as many guns on as possible and it's still going to move. It's still going to have a colossal 16 cylinder, a uh, 5 liter engine. More gears on a transmission will definitely add a lot of weight, but it's going to be able to move. Fuel tank, uh, this tank is not going to last a long time anyway. We'll give it 200 liters because that does actually make quite a difference to weight. The first thing I want to do though is put a cannon on. And I'm even simply going to name it Cannon 1. And it's obviously going to have the max firepower. Now I just wanted to do that so we could see how big the shells are and how many of them we can fit in the tank before it sort of becomes a problem. Because the hardest thing in this game in reality is trying to find a home for the shells. I could obviously exploit this and make a giant tank, put the shells in, and then shrink it down, but I want to try and fit them in there. We definitely could use smaller shells, and we'd be able to reload them and move them a lot faster, but we need maximum firepower. Now, for visibility's sake, I am going to make my gunner turret pretty tall. It's going to look really bad, but that's okay. Because we're going to cover these things with guns, but one of the important things is I need to be able to aim out of up here somewhere. Okay, I'm going to take this stupid thing for a quick test drive, and so far, it's pretty good. It's able to maneuver, it's able to move, it's able to turn. It has a struggle with small hills, but the tracks aren't exactly very big. I might have to make them a touch bigger, but so far, actually fairly functional, and it's quick. So now it's just a matter of adding a few more cannons. I'm going to try and keep them a little bit below the gun sight, that way we can actually aim this thing. And according to my screwing around, we should be able to fire 11 or 12 cannons at once, which is going to look like that. Then we just got to painfully go through and make them all the same massive size. Okay, let's give it a quick test to see how it performs. The turret does not turn very quickly, but we're mostly going to charge straight towards our enemy. Our sight lines are unobstructed. Look at that clear view. We're currently only firing one shell, but say there was a, an enemy where that tree is, uh, he would be dead. Now the trick with firing all these guns at once is you need to make the gunner fire all the guns. So he's got all 12 of them all at once. But I'm pretty sure that still doesn't work until you add the other loaders. Which means we go from a crew of 4 to a crew of 16 all crammed in this little tank. But that's their problem. Then you just need to make the passengers loaders. And our oodles of research have led us to this so far. The perfect tank. So now when we want to take out a tree, we can really take out a tree. And our tank goes flying backwards and breaks. But uh, before that, it's pretty strong. I'm kind of wondering if it breaks because we're moving forward as we fire and that force works against the tracks and probably destroys the transmission. Nope, every time we fire the whole tank just destroys itself. This is why this gets complicated. I have an idea, I try and fix it, then everything just gets blown up. Now the other trick with this is anytime I adjust anything, it completely undoes the entire process I just did. So if I fire now, I'm only firing one shell again, which isn't what we're here for. So I basically need to cut the crew back down to four to remove all those extra loaders and then add them all back in as loaders and then they'll go into each individual cannon. And this is basically my life now, but I'm committed to firing all these cannons at once into another tank. So again with the big shot, there it is, and the tank didn't blow apart, it works! They'll reload, it's going to take 100 seconds, but they will put that back together and we can still drive. We have a functioning tank so far. I think it only fired 9 of the shells, not sure why, I really don't care at this point. We're still getting most of the shells fired all at once and, well, there's a lot of shells to fire. Now, we're basically always going to be pointed straight towards the enemy, so it's mostly our front that needs the extra armor. This is probably going to make us a little bit heavier, but we need protection basically right up the front. Anywhere else, not so much. That clearly added quite a bit of weight, but... I think we're still going to be okay. We still move pretty quick, but we're very armored up front. So as long as we're facing towards our enemy, we'll win. Because we're way armored and we fire this many shells and our tank goes flying each and every time. So let's have it 1v1, an actual real proper tank. We'll go with this one. There he is over there. So he fires at us. The shot bounced right off us. So he knows he's in trouble at this point because, uh, <laughs> yeah, his shells bounce right off us. Now he's stuck in a trench. So we maybe didn't pick the smartest enemy but I'm pretty sure he has no chance against us whatsoever <laughs> until we do this and get stuck on that. 
But in 90 seconds, I can shoot my gun and fire ourselves right off of this high centeredness. I bet you didn't think tanks come with the ability to unstuck themselves, but this one does, and that's my own patented design. Just gotta let all of those shells properly reload. Now, obviously the only way to know how perfect these are is to put them into battle against other tanks, and we're already firing massive salvos at them. And I think this is gonna go well. As long as we're pointed straight at them, our armor will hold up, and we're already, uh, we've already lost one of our own. But what my team doesn't understand is you just gotta get close. You gotta charge straight toward them. I mean, the front of these are so armored, we can just probably go straight at them eating their shots until we're close enough to actually land our ridiculous cannons on them. But the strategy of these is just march straight towards the enemy, eat a few of their shots, fire their cannon into whatever they got, and then they're definitely a thousand percent dead. Actually, these might have enough, uh, like, uh... Did that go over him? Oh, it fell just short. I thought we had enough, uh, firepower to fire straight. So we did take out one of theirs, but we're currently losing this battle by just a little bit. If we hit them, though, they're doomed. Okay, we got one of the Panthers. Uh, see, as soon as they get close, we have the advantage. This isn't really a long-range tank. We're supposed to just get ourselves close enough to just shotgun them. Which is what I'm thinking we'll do to this guy in front of us here. We'll just get that. And he's definitely destroyed a thousand times over. <laughs> Pieces of him just went into orbit. I was going to realize I've only burned 20 liters of fuel so far, so I could have gone with a way smaller gas tank to save weight. I'm going to try and ambush this guy right up close and put all these shots directly into him. Oh, he's turning to compensate. Okay, ready? Uh, the dots are on him. Go. <laughs> okay, that guy was <laughs> very dead. His turret went all the way over to there. Okay, that guy over there, we're going to fire maybe just up. And yeah, we actually got him with that. The salvo just kept going and going. Well, I think we've accomplished something pretty great here today. We made a tank that can absolutely destroy real tanks just due to ridiculous firepower numbers. So uh, yeah, depending on what we're hitting, I think he was already dead, but he's definitely on fire now. But we made the most powerful tank in the universe that fires ridiculous overkill. So next time we'll figure out how to do it better.